I'm in shock and fear. So once again, welcome to the day two session uh, for the demo class of our uh, Linux administrator course. So uh, yeah, let me move on to the next one. So and once again, you can uh, just view, scan this QR code and uh, if you still want to see the course content, so you can scan this QR code and if you want to register or proceed further with the session, uh, you can scan here to register it. So this is the ease of access. It will re directly redirect you to the um, to that registration link, right? So that's the thing. And the first five sessions, it will be free. And uh, if you're not part of the WhatsApp group, please do click this uh, link and it will redirect you to the WhatsApp group, right? So, yeah. So before going to this session, so just go to this bit.ly slash Linux LL. Yes, I will send this in the chat as well. So do bookmark this uh, site, guys, so that uh, any thing related to our course, it will be shared in this uh, resource link, or it is a drive link, actually. So. Uh, Literally everything or any important thing, it will be uh, like updated here. Okay, so it is a uh, like everyone has access to this thing. So no matter if you join this uh, course or so, so, you can have access to this uh, link. Okay, so what does this link gives you is like you have all the like uh, you have the question paper, and along with that you have the answers as well here. So yeah so these are all we will see anyhow so we will see along with the concepts so just like that you have answers here but you don't know how it works right so if you don't have any expertise in uh, linux obviously you can't i and as of now you can't understand it right but uh, we will see a concept and the respective question to that concept right so that's the thing and uh, so all these are all uh important to our course and we will see much more than just rhcsa so rhcsa is just a exam point of view or that's the exam by the way but uh, more than that like what you will be doing in a day-to-day -day activities or your bau works as a linux admin right so those also will be covered and mostly uh, concentrate on that because in your exam it is an entry-level exam right so you can't expect much in that but uh, we will see all the key-based authentication. So those are all you can't expect in your exam. So key-based authentication and uh, how to restrict a user. So those kind of concepts, obviously, we will cover that. And um, so the lab point of view, so you have two options, as I told in yesterday's session. So you can install in your machine. So like Anuj uh, done, so you can install VirtualBox as well. So it's your choice. And uh, for the people who are using Mac, right? So you have a, uh, so not VMware or uh, VirtualBox, so you can use VM Fusion. So that is the version for your Mac. So VM Fusion, it is called as, and it is an evaluation version, by the way. So you need to just go to the first link and download this, okay? So that is for your Mac users. And, uh, yeah, so for a Windows user, so there is a basic requirement if you want to use a, let me show you that. So the basic system requirement if you want to use a VMware, right? So it is a, a nominal or easy one. So let me explain that. So once we saw this basic one, or once we saw the local installation, right? So we will be moving on to the slides because today we'll be seeing the booting procedure so yeah so now the basic system requirement is your cp at least it should be of one four okay and your memory is of at least it should be of four gigs right so what is one four in your uh, or one four means in your so mission right so in my case i have eight core cpu and from that eight core one core will be used in my vmware or it will be utilized for my vm machine 
So as of now, even one is running. So let me pause that. And uh, yeah, so that's my CPU point of view. So if you take the memory part, I have eight gigs. So I'm allocating. Uh, so in my case, I just allocated two gigs for my VM. So that's more than enough. So you can allocate much more if you have uh, more than eight gigs or like 16 or 32 gigs if you have. Obviously, you can allocate more, but eight gigs is more than enough for our usage, right? So that's the basic uh, system requirement. And uh, there is no re requirement for GPU and all. So obviously, we will use CLI only. So which is like your command line interface as we saw yesterday. So mostly you will be working on that. So you will install Kitty as well, so which is a, a fork of Putty. So you guys might have seen this tool. So yeah, so we will see that and how to install all those we'll be seeing in today's session. So yeah, so this is the basic system requirement. And uh, moving on, so in, let's let me quickly complete the booting procedure. So this would take the time, and once we are done, we will, can install because uh, yeah. So that's the agenda for today. So we'll be seeing the booting procedure, and it is a theory part. Okay. So yeah. So why? Because uh, as a sysadmin, you need to understand what will happen if you press the power button what is happening in the background and after two or three minutes you are seeing the lock screen or the home screen if there is no lock screen configure right so that's the thing so what is happening in the background you must understand and it is a very age-old uh, interview question as well so some of the uh, like mnc's still now asking what is a booting procedure especially uh, if you are trying for a linux admin role so why? Because it is not complex and it is not an easy one either way. So why? Because you should go with the flow. And uh, the main thing is, so why they're asking that question? Why? Because in your work environment, right? So you might encounter that, let's say, if one uh, mission is not booting correctly. So you should be in a position to uh, diagnose that server. Right. So how would you diagnose that? So you should first thing you should understand whether it is a hardware issue or a software issue or if it is a software issue only at which stage it is stuck. Right. So th these are all the stages. So you'll see one by one. And uh, let me open a paint to explain this. So the first thing in your booting procedure is your obviously power button. So once you press that power button or power on or off. So uh, let me not go a bit technical, but just a practical way. So uh, let me show you how actually it works. So let me show my, uh, so this is the, my motherboard in currently which I'm using. So yeah, just to show you how actually it works. So your BIOS, right? So BIOS, or the, that's the first level of your, so before going to BIOS, so uh, power on or off, right? So your, this is your actually motherboard. And uh, so once you press the power button, right? So all these components will be, uh, or there is a small ampere of current will be sent to all these components, okay? Or small amount of voltage will be sent to literally, this is your GPU slot, your CPU memory, and, uh, yeah, so if you have uh, storage like M.2 storage here, and uh, if you have SATA disk, it will be placed here. So like that, all the devices connected to your system, it will be, there will be a small current passed. And if it is failing, right? So if the, obviously some devices might fail during the first uh, boot or when you press on the power button, right? So. If it is failing, it will it will have a thing called as easy diagnose or easy bug, easy debug, sorry, easy debug LED, and you even have some error code. In, so you see here, right? So there would be some error code in your uh, motherboard. Okay, so so from in the first level of or the first stage itself, if it is stuck, 
you can it is a hardware issue obviously right so you need to diagnose that and you it won't proceed further so that's the important thing so so obviously you won't have access to these all in your uh, production service or in your enterprise why because these are all will be in your uh, data center and you are not the field engineer for the data center right so obviously if it is a small company you will be the both data engineer or uh, sorry the field engineer as well as your uh, the sysadmin but that is a rare scenario you would encounter right so but this is the first thing so if something hardware level fails you will see that uh, this one so whether it is a cpu error or in this is actually my uh, motherboard right so uh, I, like you can see cpu memory or whether it is a gpu error right so or it is a like whether it can boot or not so all this debug lights are not blinking then it will boot uh, so we are good okay so that's the thing so the next part or so like the small amount of current which i told right so that operation is called as post just power on self test so if this post is done so you, for the people who are who used hp laptops right so you might have seen hp health check so that health check also does the same so it will be running a diagnostic check for all the components right so it is it is kind of same but in a not in a software level so that will work as in a software level whereas here it will check in a hardware level so whether all the components can operate during that particular boot because obviously it depends on like let's say if the fan is not spinning the cpu might throttle and uh, it won't boot up so like that some any issue it might be so that's the thing so once if it is all passed it will move on to the next stage which is called as obviously or the famous one which is your bios so why famous right so as a sysadmin so here it also you will be encountering issue so you will be the one having access to all these so not a, a application team okay so why because since uh, you will have the uh, so let's say it is a physical server and the bios screen will be opened in your let's say it is a hp server so it will be having in a hp ilo or if it is a cisco means it is a cisco ucs so like that these are all kind of, uh, so these are all consoles of that server or uh, so these are all actually consoles okay so it can load many servers and you can open a remote session so why a uh, remote session is uh, we will see those thing in later session but actually uh, so if it is a physical server you can diagnose all that bios issues here itself in this uh, controller actually okay so this is a controller or a separate part in your motherboard and uh, yeah so that's your hp uh, this is a basic hp example and this is your uh, hp ilo service port okay so like that this port will be populated in your uh, actual servers like this and uh, so many so this is a huge concept by the way so yeah so there is a rack server and so but the point here is you will be the one having access to this bios and you as well as the field engineer okay so that's the thing so what is bios now so bios is nothing but basic input output system and uh, you might have seen this screen so bios in your again i will open msi so because the ui is uh, easy to understand so this is the bios screen of your uh, msi motherboard so each uh, motherboard or each vendor has their own user interface and their information also might change but the basic information in your motherboard is you can see what is your memory size what is your cpu uh, architecture or what is the actual cpu you have in your server as well as your what is the bios version and how much temperature it is the current stat of the cpu uh, whether it's like the temperature is high so these are all uh, so 
if you have a basic laptop or like a laptop which is 10 year old so it, the bios would be in a blue screen or it is a very old one it would be so this is kind of like a like you won't see this bios in some of the motherboards actually but this is the basic information you can see so what is the memory frequency and cpu frequency so what are those are so at which speed that cpu or memory should be running so this is what you see here 266 megahertz okay so in my case also it would be the same so 266 so this is my uh, ram ram speed so i can increase or i can do overclocking to this so we don't uh, dwell too deep into these concepts since it is uh, hardware level so we need to increase the frequency of it and uh, increase the how much voltage should be uh, provided to that uh, from your psu and so many things but the point here is you can increase the speed and all those basic information are fetched in your bios screen okay and you can modify this so that's the important thing so you can modify this uh, here so you can yeah so you have two profiles here right so you see profile one and two and you can modify to your wish actually so here you see 3600 megahertz so till that it can go in this case the ram can push to this much uh, speed and uh, in my case the base cpu uh, frequency is 3 gigahertz or 3000 megahertz okay so you can get this info in your windows as well so just type ms info 32 and uh, you can see yeah all the same info you see in your bios you can see here as well okay so that's the thing. so uh so that's the first thing it will be loading and but so the most important question in your interview you might expect is bios is not stored in your hard disk so that is not a that is a statement okay so it won't be stored in your hard disk why because it will be on top of your hard disk means it will be stored in your actual motherboard only okay and this is the so this this is actually a battery cmos battery so this is the one which is powering your uh, bios as well as your uh, time of your system or system time so we'll we'll see those things later so uh, yeah that's the bios part so next so once your bios or all this are fine and there is one important thing here is your boot priority so which one should be booted first so that is an important question uh we should ask right so let's say i have a hard disk and i have a, yeah hard disk and uh, the next one would be a cd drive or the next one it is like uh, another hard disk or ssd so like that you have multiple devices so which one should be booted first so that is a very important question we need to ask or uh, it should be and uh, like it should be answered as per the booting procedure right so why because the system doesn't know so it will follow that procedure and uh, so if it is not so none of the devices are bootable it won't boot actually so it won't move to the next stage so that's the important thing or in some cases you might uh, seen this uh, system or os not found error why because your hard disk is not uh, bootable or available at that time right so there might be a hard disk failure or a power uh, so power like it will be failed in the post so like that some issue it might be so that the hard disk is not visible and it won't boot further so it will throw some error in the bios itself so that's the thing and uh, so that's the important thing actually here your booting priority so it can be cd drive cd or dvd drive and your pen drive or anything right so let me do it as remove all this removable drive okay so once you select hard disk as the bootable disk the next one is the important one is your 
MBR. Okay, so what is MBR? So for that, let me draw this. So there are two partition styles. Okay, so this might be not confusing. So you might have never uh, configured this in your like Windows actually. So uh, first thing there are, uh, as I told, two partition styles which are MBR and GPT. So MBR is nothing but master boot record. And GPT is GUID partition table. And in so so what are the, what is the difference between these two are partition styles by the way. So what is that? So first thing as I told, uh, so it will load this MBR in your Linux, but in your Windows it is GPT is the preferred from your Windows eight. Uh, onwards gpt they are pushing harder why because that is the latest one and uh, so that is good actually compared to your mbr gpt has its own benefits so we will see those okay so what is these two are as i told it is a partition style and uh, it depends on how it approaches the device or uh, your storage device especially your hard disk so how to partition it so without partitioning uh, let's say this is a new disk uh, or uh, let me add a new disk in disk three uh, just for an example it will be unallocated or it will be uh, like it won't have any driver letter or something right so like c colon or there won't be any volume label as well as a driver letter to it so i need to allocate that but so in order to allocate that I need to format it to a specific file system format. So in your Windows, you have NTFS. In your Linux, you have multiple. But for the time being, uh, we will see this NTFS concept. Okay. So uh, once you're done, after that, it will be partitioned. And that drive, which is like, let's say this one, will be a primary partition. So like that, you can create four primaries in your MBR. Whereas in your GPT, you can create 128 prime. Uh, primary partitions. So you will see this concept extensively in our disk management. But why? Because that is that is an important thing actually. So primary and extended concept. And in order to make sure this is a like um, this is a GPT disk. So you just uh, right click on any one of the disk. Even in your laptop, you just do that and go to properties. And if you go to the volume. You see the partition style, mostly like 90% it will be GPT. So very rare scenario, it might uh, be formatted as MBR. So if you format it as MBR also, you can convert it to GPT. Okay, so that's the thing. And uh, to be frank, GPT is like, uh, it's been uh, updated version of MBR. So MBR is much more compatible with older systems or legacy servers, it is called as like, uh, older than 20 years old or more, much more than that, like 30 years old system, which is we for sure compatible with MBR, whereas here it is not. Okay, so that's the thing, master boot record. And so the next one is here, how it is approaching the sectors. So uh, for us, it is just like uh, we will be seeing the size of it, like the 238. Uh, gigs or some 500 gigs or something but in the server point of view so it will be seen like this uh, so if you anyone might have done this defragmentation so you might have seen so this is the actual disk it will be okay so it will be in some these kind of sectors and uh, there will be a lot of sectors by the way okay so yeah so uh, it depends on the size of the disk. So all these examples are applicable for your uh, physical hard disk, not your SSD. Why? Because SSD is, is, uh, doesn't work like a hard disk, right? So that's the difference between both. So if you take HDD, so it, or whatever concepts we are seeing, so it is like this sectors or uh, actually uh, like the sectors is much more easy to understand when it comes to a hard disk but if it is a ssd it won't be right so ssd 
let me show you that. So SSD doesn't work. So this is the actual SSD. So there is no physical disk, right? So it is just like your uh, extended version of your pen drive would be just a solid disk or a solid uh, chip. It is. So that's the main difference. But uh, it also works in a sector base since that is the uh, like only that is there as of now so there is no new method or partition style developed only for ssds right so that's the thing and uh, so if, when you take here so or when it when it is in hard disk you can easily understand how it is converting it to a sector so there will be many sectors i'm just giving a basic example so let's say this hard disk of um, let's say 20 gigs is of uh, eight sectors, okay? So which sector should be booted first? So let's say this sector should be booted first, right? So, and what is the content of that sector? So what it will be have actually doing is, so once you press the power button, once it is past this all, so it will be searching for that first sector. So this, uh, this arm right or io head it is called as so it will be searching for the first sector and if this is not found right so that's where you'll see that boot device not found so once every time you create a boot disk it will create a one thing called as metadata okay so metadata is nothing but a data on data means what is the disk it need to boot or what is the next step of it so uh, here, it would be the next step will be grub. So the grub will be residing here. And it will be very less in size of, uh, for the time being, it is like, uh, let's say 800 KB or something. It will be very small than that. But yeah, so that's the thing. So if it can't found or it can't identify this one, it will be failing here. Okay, so this is the first sector, by the way. And uh, so each and every sectors, it will be of different blocks. So this is a sectors and blocks actually, um, yeah. So this is how the system will look like. If you see uh, your system would, okay, it is a very small image. So this is how it will be in your, uh, like we can't see that, but this is how it will look like your uh, sectors or uh, your actual blocks, it will be, okay? So all this blue will be populated, all this green are uh, also populated and it is not organized. And uh, this gray one are free, uh, free, which is like, uh, means it is uh, free size or free blocks, okay, like that. So yeah, so that is your MBR actually, so yeah. And this primary and uh, extended partitions, so those concepts we will see in upcoming sessions. Okay, but as of now, MBR is uh, you or uh, MBR is the preferred one, especially in Linux. Right. So the next one, as I told, it is it will boot to the grub which is residing in this first sector. So next one is your yeah, grub. So again, this grub screen also you might have encountered. Uh, which is this one. So you have two, let's say you are having dual boot, right? So dual boot in the sense, you have Windows as well as Linux installed in your base or in the same hard disk, let's say. So Windows 11 as well as real uh, 9.2 or Ubuntu or anything, any operating system. If you are, uh, so first thing, the system must identify which one should be booted. The next thing, right? So in order to identify or in order to uh, keep the system informed, so please do boot this operating system like that. Why? Because all the drivers and literally the ha hardware usage, everything, the system information and uh, the like, um, the kernel and uh, so how the operating system works literally everything is different in these two are right 
so how windows 11 works is drastically different compared to your uh, your real in this example so like that uh, to in order to system to identify that we need to select which one to be booted so this is applicable only for dual boot and uh, yeah so if you have that it will be or you can see that screen if you don't have also this grub will be loaded actually okay so that's the thing so this is the grub screen and uh, yeah this is the one so okay well this is very small in size so you see a linux mint and uh, okay that is the same yeah you see here it is like ubuntu and you have windows 7 as well so in the same machine right so like that or you might have seen this one if you are using ubuntu uh, oh yes and if you are using windows you might have seen this screen if you ever installed uh, ubuntu in your uh, same disk you might have seen this uh, screen like windows 10 or if you have another instance of windows uh, like 7 as well as ubuntu so like that this is called as dual boot or triple boot in this case and uh, it is possible first thing and if you must use the same device or same disk to boot it so in this case you see there is around uh, six operating system uh, installed right so that's the thing and it is also possible so it depends on how much uh, hard disk size you are going to use and uh, yeah so that's the thing about grub so once grub is loaded the next one is the most important one is your obviously kernel so all this explanation it is let me show you that as well so this is your nbr explanation so yeah and uh, yeah so in simple terms nbr loads and executes the grub so after that grub full form is grand unified bootloader okay and uh, so that's what like grub displays a splash screen and uh, so you need to select that so if you don't have any other operating system it will be like only one it will be booted but this will be loaded for sure even windows have and your, your linux or any even mac does have grub screen so that's the thing so the next one is your kernel so what is kernel by the way so yesterday i did show you a github page of the founder of Linux, right? So he did, he didn't code the whole operating system, rather he coded only the kernel of the server or of the Linux, right? So what is, so again, what is kernel is, that is the kind of heart of your server, right? a heart of the whole system. Why? Because it loads all your, like, uh, let me show you. So don't think that okay, I'm giving a Windows example. So here it is GUI, right? So you can easily, connect to it since you are using windows submission so easily you can connect to it okay so that's the thing but we will see eventually see how it works in your linux machine as well so if you see here these are all my hard hardware and the respective drivers as well right so you have uh, audio bluetooth uh, display driver is my gpu like that multiple drivers are there so all this driver information and uh, my uh, disk management, right? So all my disk information and the respective uh, library files. So the important library files, which are in my system 32 path, which is needed for a Windows machine. So that is also, it will be loaded to this one. So like that, you have multiple information must be loaded in your kernel. And that's the reason it is that important. Okay, so it will almost, if it is failing in kernel, so yeah, so you need to diagnose that for sure. And if, so there is a thing called as kernel panic. So if that happens also, you can restore your kernel. So those things we'll see in later session. So driver uh, information. hardware compatibility so 
so in this section itself it will be or internal itself it will be checking that let's say you connected a gpu and the driver is not compatible to it or the gpu itself is not compatible to your uh, motherboard so uh, in that case like uh, let's say your motherboard is a older one like 10 years old and you are connecting the latest GP which is launched, which is around like let's say one lakh, right? So it won't be for sure comp not compatible, right? So you, because your motherboard is a very old one, it like uh, it can't identify that uh, like your graphics card. Let's say it did uh, like uh, skipped all this or it did pass through all these steps, it will be. Uh, having an issue in this kernel point of view. Why? Because the driver will have issues. It won't be compatible, right? So it won't boot or the GPU won't be starting or it might give some driver error. Even if it is booted also, it will give some blue screen error in, if it is a Windows machine, right? So those kind of issues also happen if uh, there is an issue with your kernel or if it is not loaded exactly as required in the kernel. So that's the thing so that's how important your kernel is and uh, yeah so that's the first process it will be loading so the next one is your init so uh, so after kernel so as i told uh, init process is like nothing but your advanced boot option and uh, you have multiple boot options after that so first thing you did selected kernel so now we need to make sure whether the system to be booted in safe mode or in a normal mode. So again, this screen also you might have been familiar if you are using Windows for quite some time. So you might have seen the screen called a safe mode or uh, advanced boot option. So if you uh, accidentally rebooting your machine again and again, you might have encountered this screen, right? So uh, advanced option, system restore or something. And uh, yeah, so that's, this is your startup setting and you have system config as well. Right, so in your windows, this is the option. So just go to boot and uh, you see safe boot and these many options are there. And uh, even in your windows, you can uh, remove the GUI mode. So if you click on this, it will be like the old days, like MS-DOS. So that it will be only loading the command prompt. And you might have seen this screen if you are accidentally rebooting your, uh, uh, what is that, laptop again and again, or if it is having some issue. So you might have seen this safe mode, safe mode with network, safe mode with command prompt, like that. So many options are there. Similarly, in Linux also, so many options are there after it loads the kernel, right? So we need to make sure which option should be selected by default, and it is called as init process, okay? So init is nothing but initializing the uh, process or initializing that profile, right? So, and it is called as init tab or init table, okay? So that's the thing. And you have multiple options here. So we will see those. The first thing, let me show it in the command, sorry, notepad. So first thing is your init zero. So init zero is nothing but your shutdown. And next one is your init one. So shutdown means if you type init zero in your shell, so we'll see what is shell in later session. But once you type that, uh, the system will go to a shutdown mode. So it is nothing but the shutdown in your Windows machine like this, right? So that's the thing. So init one is your single user mode. So what is single user mode, right? So, uh, so let me explain that. So single user mode is nothing but, uh, let's say this is my server. So only I can access this as of now or this particular settings or along with this. So this is called as console by the way, a single user mode is nothing but a console access. So uh, why? Because physically I can access this machine but with the settings. So I can change the settings or everything. But in your, uh, so you can also access this if you have 
um like if you are part of my network right so but as of now i am the only uh, point of uh, usage or only user uh, as per this server right so that's the reason it is single user mode so you will see one much more better example once we launch the or once we have created the vm so we will uh, see that okay so the next one is multi user without networking so or without nfs uh, so means your network drive or your network settings right so it won't be loaded so it will be uh, like it will be loaded in the kernel level but it won't be pushed to the next stage okay so that's your uh, if you give in it to as a default uh, init level. So the next one is here, the init three. So which is the commonly used one, which is a fully multi-user mode. Okay, so which is, uh, so this is an important one. And why? Because so as a Linux is nothing but a multi-user mode, means the same user we can open multiple sessions. So how many sessions you might ask? So n number of sessions, as per your requirement. So this concept itself is not applicable in your uh, Windows. So how means? So let's say if I have a same server, or uh, if I'm trying to log in as an admin of the same mission. So let's say two sessions are open. So session A and session B, right? So. Uh, if a user is trying to log into Windows Server uh, something, so Windows Server A, and even Session B is also trying the same with the same user, which is admin, let's say. Right, so even this guy is trying. So either one user only, it will be allowing. So if a Session A is loaded first, and if Session B is also trying the same, or if it is open the Session B, Session A will be discontinued, uh, disconnected. Okay. And the same thing goes uh, vice versa. So if this guy again loads, this will be disconnected like that. So that's how. Uh, so that's not a multi user mode itself, right? So that's the thing. So, uh, so why I told that, right? So in your Windows, that's the flaw or that is the uh, issue with windows whereas in your linux it is a multi-user mode and that is also one of the unique selling point of or uh, that is the main reason mass audience take, uh, like uh, migrated to linux especially in enterprise because the same user only will be used in many times or multiple teams will use the same user as per the requirement right so that's the thing so now that's your init three and init four, it is uh, there is no use of it. So you can you can skip that. And init five is an interesting one. So init five is nothing but your X11, which is init five is your actually GUI mode. So we will install a GUI mode in our uh, VMware in a moment. So that's your init five. So how about init six? So init six is nothing but a reboot. So if you type init six in the shell, it will reboot your machine. Okay, so with that, your init process is done. So once this, uh, so once these init levels are loaded, there is one more section, which is called as run level. Okay, so once, let me just type this one. So uh, single user now. So any doubts till now, guys? Please do uh, drop a message in the chat. So we'll look into. Multi user without network. Same thing with network. means the network driver will be loaded, that's it, okay? So, and in, init four is not there. So init five is your GUI, or it is called as X11, and init six is your reboot. Okay, so 
with that your init process or init run levels are done so after that also still it is not completed your booting procedure so lastly it will be loading your actually your uh, startup programs in your windows you see many startup programs right so if you go here so these are all the startup apps in my machine right so like that in your windows uh, it is startup apps whereas in your linux it is called as run levels means these are all the uh, so let's say your run level is three and this if you want to load some of the apps let's say you want to load a monitoring tool right so or uh, you want to load a backup service so those kind of services it will be added here or there is one more path so let me explain that as well so this is what in it and this is your run level so run level is uh, obviously it will be loaded from this specific path only and all these are directories by the way so rc.d is a directory rc.d inside that you have different for each run level there is a different directory name so rd uh, sorry rc dot uh sorry rc 0 dot d from that till rc 6 dot d so like uh so mostly the as i told you are in it three will be loaded so mostly in it three or in it five so either of these two will be actually usable why because those two are the one which is like uh how to say like usable right so because it is multi-user with network and init 5 is like uh, your gui mode so that's the main reason these two are preferred and in our case we will use uh, init 5 so once that is done these are the run levels is usable and uh, or configured so let's say you have any startup program you can configure there or you can do it in this init system D process itself. So etc init dot D. So there is a directory called as init dot D. Under that, you can store any process, let's say backup or net backup software. So you can load that process here as well. So this will load no matter any, uh, like you are part of any run level, this will be loaded along with the operating system. Okay, so that's the thing. So with that, so after this only you will be seeing or ended up with the, um, so ending ended up with your home screen or your lock screen. Okay, so yeah, that's your main thing. So what is the difference between RAID and RC? So this, okay, RAID is a disk management concept, uh, Rama. So RAID is totally different. So this RC is nothing but your run level. Okay, so this is a different one. Yeah, so. So, yeah, so any, any other doubts? So after that, it will try to authenticate. So during authentication also, if you are facing any issue, you need to diagnose that as a sysadmin, like, like there might be AD issue, or if it is an Active Directory configured, so there might be an AD issue. So like that, uh, yeah, so, so many issues it might be. So that's the important thing. So you should be in a position to diagnose whatever issues you're facing in your uh, server okay so yeah so now uh, just a second
So RC is nothing but your uh, that's what like voting process, like just like your startup uh, Ramakrishna. Okay, so your startup service. So RAID is totally a RAID zero, RAID one. So those are all uh, your storage concepts, right? So you don't confuse those two. Okay, so that is different. And if time permits, we will see RAID concepts as well. So in upcoming sessions, but uh, yeah. So with that, uh, our booting procedures are done. And once this run level is uh, done, or if it is booted, you'll be seeing that lock screen as I told. So that's what your booting procedure is. So again, I didn't went too deep into each uh, process. So because with this BIOS itself, we can, uh, like you can talk about like three to four hours. So that many concepts are inside. So like advanced, uh, uh, like uh, oh, like overclocking and uh, so many things. So you can consider in BIOS as well as in your kernel. So many things are, or so many components are involved in your kernel. So that's the thing. So um, yeah. So the next one is, as I told, we will be installing our uh, VMware workstation uh, and your any one of the cloud service provider. So as I told first, your system basic system requirement is not met, but mostly it is fine. Like means you, uh, so as of now in 2023, almost every missions has the basic, at least one CPU core and four gigs of RAM. So two gigs of RAM would be sufficient, but uh, it need to run the base OS, right? Like means your Windows 11, it should run. So for that's the reason, main reason we took, uh, or I suggest four gigs at least because it will be very slow. And uh, yeah, and disk space of 20 gigs. So obviously 20 gigs uh, will be there in any server or system. So now we will, uh, first thing, and first and foremost thing is, yeah, Virtualization need to be enabled. So it's already time, right? So um, so there is, so you guys need to understand what is virtualization and containerization. So I will explain that in the next session if possible. And uh, yeah, so once I explain that, we will install these two because it's already time. And uh, yeah, so any doubts in the booting procedure, please do let me know. And you can reach out to me in uh, this mail. And if you are fine with my uh, training way, you can enroll with the course using this link. Let me just load. So yesterday I didn't uh, give the link for the session, right? Just a sec. So since so many courses are there, so it's a lot to search for so i just sent in the chat so this is the link okay so uh, each day session it will be uploaded here means the recording and uh, you can see the first uh, five days uh, recording or the demo a recording in your YouTube channel. Just a sec, let me pull that as well. Yeah. So like this, okay. So this is my SLA session. So yeah, uh, like that, uh, you can see the recordings. And if you're fine with the, my way of training, you can enroll the session, guys. Okay. So yeah. 
and we will see everything in practical way. So that's the thing. And we must, since it is a practical exam point of view, as well as uh, as a Linux admin, you must work in a practical machine or a server. So literally, we so this session is a three theory part, and tomorrow we will see how the installation done. And once we are done, tomorrow is also not a theory part, but how the file systems works, right? So those things we'll see. And once we see that, so uh, literally uh, upcoming sessions, everything would be a theory, sorry, a practical part. So, yeah. So if there is no doubts and uh, that's it for the day, guys, then. So please do download the VM. Uh, like the ISO and uh, like you can either choose VirtualBox, VMware, and if you're uh, using Mac OS, you can use VM Fusion. Okay. So yeah, that's it for the day then. Thanks all.